Hey there everybody, this is Tiger Eye Gaming, and welcome back to episode 7 of my Minecraft Hardcore Let's Play. In today's episode, we have just one goal and one goal alone, getting netherite armor. Now, the way I want to run this is to sort of do it like an experiment, like we did with diamond mining in episode 2. The way that I want to do this netherite experiment is to use the two main sources that people like to use for mining netherite, TNT and beds. Just in case anyone's unaware of why people might use TNT and beds to mine for ancient debris in the nether, ancient debris is actually blast resistant, unlike things like netherite, gravel, blackstone, and any other blocks you might find down here. So by using TNT and by using beds, which of course blow up in the nether if you try to use them, you can expose a whole lot of air because all this nether nether rack around us, excuse me, all this nether rack around us is going to be blown up and it's going to go away, thereby revealing any ancient debris, which will be left behind because like I said before, it's blast resistant. As a result, not only is using explosives to mine for netherite a very fun way to do it, it's also a very efficient way to do it, because ancient debris is very, very rare. It's definitely rarer than diamonds and those are pretty tough to find on their own. So what we're going to do is set down, let's see, we will set down that crafting table probably toss down a chest just in case we need a little bit of extra storage down here and we're gonna go ahead and get started by comparing how much ancient debris we can get by blowing up this area with TNT with how much ancient debris we can get by blowing up the area with beds. Now at first I did want to do that same exact thing that we did in episode 2, the diamond mining episode, which was spending 30 minutes using the two different methods of TNT mining and bed mining. However, I'm not sure we have enough TNT to last 30 full minutes. So I think what I'm going to do instead is just use up all 27 TNT that I have. Those were actually all the TNT that I got from the three desert temples in our home desert biome. So putting them to good use here. And however long it takes to dig out this tunnel, place down the TNT, explode that TNT, and survey our results, that's how long I'll spend using the bed method as well. So I'll, I'll time this whole TNT thing and see how long it takes, and I'll spend that same amount of time using the bed method so that we can at least be somewhat scientific with all this. But yeah, with that being said, I think it's about time to get down... <laughs> what? Alright. I was not expecting that, I promise. I promise that wasn't planned. <laughs> okay, well nice, we, we have just proven live on camera <laughs> there we go we've just shown life on camera the benefits of i suppose a, a third method of ancient debris mining which is just strip mining now honestly i normally wouldn't recommend that because oh my god are you kidding me D what i i legit don't think i've ever seen two that close before oh my god <laughs> this is my face right now in real life Actually, he's kind of expressionless because he's Batman. But yeah, th that is wild. <laughs> we just found two pieces. Like, what? One, two, three, four, five blocks away? Oh my god, that is insane. Okay, well, this could mean one of two things. It could mean that we're, <laughs> we're um, using up all our luck early on, which is not a good sign for our experiment. Or it could mean that this is just a really, really productive way to dig. <laughs> Alright, well, nice. Okay, I, I really am shook. I was not expecting that. Well, alright, it, it's still experiment time. We, we're just two pieces of ancient debris closer to our goal. So I think instead I'm going to start the tunnel from here. That way we don't go in the chunks that already had these pieces of ancient debris generate. And I guess we'll, we'll start a little tunnel from here. So I will dig enough blocks out to place down these 27 TNT. And I think it's about time that we see how that looks in the form of a time lapse.
So it turns out that 27 TNT is really not that much when it comes to netherite mining. You can actually see the end of this tunnel right here, although it, it is blocked a little bit off by lava at the end. But I then went on over to this side and yeah, we we didn't really make too much of a dent in this direction either. So maybe it would have been helpful if I had crafted a little bit more of TNT, but kind of the point of me doing this now was that I don't have a gunpowder farm yet, but I did have 27 TNT. So I suppose this is more of an introduction to netherite mining than anything. And you know what? We have managed to find four ancient debris. Granted, two of them were from just digging out the tunnel, but hey, that, that's still part of the process, right? So I'll go ahead and count that, and that means we have enough for one netherite ingot. What I do believe this means, however, is that it might not really be worth our time anymore to do the whole experiment thing. Instead, since we actually do have a decent amount of wool that I managed to collect from sheep in the savanna biome, I'm thinking that we go ahead and just use up all the wool that we have here in crafting beds just like this. This is a much easier way to store beds so you don't have to take a billion beds in your inventory since they all take up so much space. So I think what we're going to do is, instead of doing the whole experiment thing and only taking about 10 minutes to mine with beds, because that's about how long it took me to mine out the TNT tunnel, place that down and blow it up, I think we're just going to go ahead and probably go until I'm out of wool. Since, you know, I could use a little bit more than four ancient debris. I'd hopefully like to exit today with more than just two netherite ingots. So yeah, I think that's what we're going to do. We're going to spend some time blowing up the nether with beds. Unfortunately, I don't have any fire resistance potions. I actually was planning to make some before I came here, but then I realized that I don't have any nether wart. So can't exactly brew those potions yet, unfortunately. However, we do have a whole lot of wool and a whole lot of wood. So we're prepared to do some mining. I'll just have to be careful for lava pockets. With that all said, I think it's about time to get going. So as soon as I find a direction that is not too full of these lava falls, we're going to go ahead and get to bed mining.
Well, here we are. It's now officially the next day. I did have to break this up into a few little segments because it turns out that three stacks of wool, that makes a whole lot of beds. <laughs> so about 64 beds later, we have done a whole lot of netherite mining and well, we've been pretty successful. We now have 31 ancient debris along with stacks on stacks of netherrack, a whole bunch of magma blocks and a whole bunch of blackstone as well as a little bit of nether quartz. Some of that is in a chest down there, but yeah, we have we have made out a whole lot of profits from that netherite mining session. Oof, that was a little trippy. But yeah, now that we have 31 ancient debris, I think we can spend the rest of this episode upgrading some of our stuff to netherite armor and netherite tools. I really wasn't expecting to get that much with just maybe two hours worth of netherite mining overall. The TNT mining itself was pretty short, but we did spend a substantial amount of time using the beds to mine. So I'm going to go ahead and pop that ancient debris into the blast furnace so we can get the, what is it, netherite scraps, which will then combine with gold to make netherite ingots. Now, I did say at the beginning of this video that we'd be kind of doing an experiment to see which way was the better way to mine for netherite, using TNT or using beds. Unfortunately, we weren't able to do it as quote unquote scientifically as we did in episode two with the diamond mining experiment. So I think I'm gonna leave my final conclusion at this. TNT mining is maybe a little bit more efficient and in my opinion, it is a little bit more fun. You don't have to clean up all the fire that comes along with bed explosions in the nether. So that's a, a big time saver. All you really have to do is dig out a, a tunnel in one direction, place TNT down every few blocks and then light it and boom, you've got a tunnel instant made. Whereas bed mining is a little bit more involved. You do have to put out all the little fires that start when you explode a bed in the nether just to make sure that there's no ancient debris hiding behind the fires. And you have to manually dig, dig, dig. Then you place down the bed, you place down a block in front of you, and you right click. So it takes a little bit longer, but ultimately it is a really cheap method of mining for netherite, especially when you're still in the relatively early stages of the game like I am now. All you need is wood and wool, Two things that are both very easy to obtain in the early game. In fact, in the very near future, I am hoping to set up an automatic wool farm. But even without that, just going on over to the savannah and using my shears to shear up a whole bunch of sheep, we were able to get three stacks of wool and maybe just a, a day's worth of work. So overall, in the early game, I probably would say that bed mining is the way to go. Once you have a gunpowder farm and you have access to automatic gunpowder, that's probably the more efficient way to go about it, and like I said, it is more fun. Who doesn't love explosions after all, right? Ladies and gentlemen, here it is, our very first netherite scraps of the series. Boom, gotta love it. And the little recipe tab, whatever you call it, that little recipe note popped up in the upper right corner, which means that all we need now is a little bit of gold. I have been trying to consolidate some of my uh, precious metals into blocks like this just to save some space because I have definitely been too lazy to make a proper storage system. That's another thing that's on the docket for an upcoming episode. But as for now, we can go ahead and get some gold ingots crafted up. And without any further ado, we got four there and we got four there. Boom, seven netherite ingots. You'll love to see it. Well, now the next major decision that we have to make is, what are we going to put these netherite ingots on? I do think my helmet is perfect as is. All I need to do right now is just add mending, and then it should be pretty much perfect. I'm good with having it fire protection because I already have a couple of other protection items, my boots and my chest plate. So I think the helmet will probably be a good target to upgrade to netherite. Like I said, the diamond chest plate is pretty much perfect, unbreaking three protection four, so that's probably another good target. And honestly, I'm pretty satisfied with the diamond leggings too. Blast protection 4 on breaking 3 is solid. I don't really like having protection on all my stuff. It's nice to have these specialized ones on at least some of your armor, like fire protection and blast protection. The fire protection definitely helped because, well, I got set on fire a lot in the course of that netherite mining. Finally, we go down to our boots. These I'm not quite sure about because I do need feather falling on them. I'm not quite sure what the best way to go about it is, if uh, I should just keep on enchanting books until I get a Feather Falling 4 enchantment and then add it to these, or if I should use my uh, Armorer Villager at the trading hall to get a whole bunch of diamond boots and then just enchant the boots over and over. So I'll have to make a decision on that. 
And if you have any tips, do let me know in the comments. But I think those, at least those first two pieces of armor are going to be good targets for netherite. This pickaxe definitely will. This is a perfect pickaxe. And then you know what? I might as well just go for maybe the shovel and the axe. Because yeah, I don't think the sword is ready. So I think that's a, a pretty solid plan, at least for now. We got one, two, three, and then four, five. So that way we will have two netherite ingots left over. And that's always a good idea. If anyone has any recommendations in the comments for what I should use my uh, remaining two netherite ingots to upgrade, do let me know. So I've gone ahead and run myself back on over to the village so I can use that guy's smithing table up there. And, well, as you can see up in the distance, we've got some phantoms spawning in for, I believe, the very first time in this series. And as you also might be able to tell, that guy's actually avoiding me. He's not bothering me. And just in case you didn't know, that's because I got my cat with me. Yeah, these guys actually are a lot like creepers in that they're scared of cats. So this guy, not only is he very cute, but... He's actually pretty effective in preventing these guys from bothering me. That being said, I do think I'm going to sleep because they are loud. <laughs> so let me... Oh, wait. I used to have a bed in there, but I forgot I don't have it anymore. Let me go ahead and annex someone's bed. Uh, excuse me, fella. And there we go. Thank you, my friend. Oh, and he gave me a rabbit's foot, too. Perfect. No rabbits were harmed in the making of this rabbit's foot, I'm assuming. Okay, come on up with me, buddy. Hopefully those phantoms will die pretty quick and we don't have to hear them being super loud. But we are now up here, we have got our smithing table, and I think it's about time that we make our very first netherite tool. We've gone ahead and put the netherite ingot in, and without any further ado, there we go. Our very first piece of netherite gear in this world. You know, part of me kind of wishes that netherite tools were a little bit prettier. This basically looks like an enchanted stone pickaxe, but we all know it's not. We all know it's better. We all know it mines a little bit quicker. And most importantly for a pickaxe, look at that durability. 2031. In my mind, that's the biggest perk of upgrading your tools to netherite, is the enhanced durability. It's just absolutely huge. But yeah, I think I'll go ahead and upgrade the remaining tools I said I would upgrade. Boom, netherite shovel. Boom, netherite axe. And now let's hit the diamond chest plate and the diamond helmet. Boom, netherite helmet. And boom, netherite chest plate. Well, we are looking good. There we go. And technically, we do have enough netherite to upgrade those two bottom pieces. I may go ahead and spend some time in this trading hall trying to level up, so hopefully I can enchant these diamond boots with Feather Falling 4, which is the main extra thing that I want on these boots. I will also have to think about these leggings, because like I said, I, I am pretty satisfied with this, especially since creepers are a big threat in hardcore mode, but I'll have to think about it a little bit more before I use up my precious netherite. But yeah, with all that said, I think we've managed to accomplish a whole lot in this episode. We mined out 31 ancient debris from the nether using a combination of TNT mining and bed mining, but mostly bed mining. And then we managed to, to use that to make seven netherite ingots, which we then applied to our helmet, our chest plate, our pickaxe, our shovel, and our axe. With two netherite ingots to spare, hopefully we can use those up next episode or in the coming episodes. So, with that all said, thank you all very much for watching. Please do check out my last video if you haven't already. It's 100 days in hardcore Minecraft. I know those videos are pretty popular, so I figured I'd try my hand at making one, and it was pretty fun. Got to flex my editing muscles a little bit more. But yeah, thank you all very much for watching, and I will see you in the next episode soon.